a two component CW transmitter on 80 meters. How far can it transmit? It is super simple using just a solderless breadboard and a crystal oscillator module. That is on 3.6864 megahertz within the amateur 80 meter band. The only other component is a disc ceramic coupling capacitor of about 10 nanofarad, not critical. As for the wiring, it's so simple, it doesn't even need a circuit diagram. There are four pins on this module. I'm only using three. This one here, the bottom left, is the earth or ground connection. That goes to the negative supply and also to the ground on the antenna socket. Here on the bottom right is the RF output connection that goes to a disc ceramic coupling capacitor and then onto this low pass filter. I've previously described it but I suggest you use something like this with a basic transmitter to chop off the harmonics. This particular one has two filters, one for 7, one for 3.5 megahertz. And here in the top right is the power supply connection, which you can also key. I am using a 12 volt battery, but I've got in line a variable voltage regulator. Right now I've got it set to 5 volts. The voltage regulator would use a chip like an LM317. So that's all there is to it. Can I make myself heard at a distance with this setup? I know that I could with other modules. See my video on one I did for 28 megahertz, but that was pretty local. I was getting a five kilometer range. It's at night, it's 80 meters, so I may well do a lot further with this one. I'm now using the VK5 ARG Kiwi SDR. It's about six or 700 kilometers from here, has a very low noise level, so if anything can hear me, this will. As you just heard, that was my call sign. It was weak, it was amongst the noise, but it was audible. And that's when I was using a SSB setting. Right now I'm on 3686.3, set up for CW with the narrow filter. Now have a listen and see if it's better with the narrower selectivity. Now I'll apply a carrier and you'll be able to hear it fading. At times buried in the noise, other times quite audible.
Now the other thing I'll do is I'll crank the voltage up. You might have heard the frequency change a little bit. Anyway, it's quite a bit stronger now. I'm now running about 8 volts. Now I'll see if I can go a bit higher. All of a sudden, it's gone. And you know why it's gone? I've cranked the voltage too high. I think I would have gone to about 9 or 10 volts. And at that point, the oscillator module just didn't want to play. And stopped suddenly, just like that. Luckily I've got a few, so I'll put another in and see how we can go. But I won't go any higher than 8 volts. Just leaving it at 8 volts and just have a listen at the amount of fading. But at times it's a very solid signal. Let's see what happens if I drop the voltage. I'm at 8 volts. Now down to about 5. That's 4 volts. That's 3.5. Just move the frequency slightly. Still on three and a half. That's three volts. Now I'll just make sure it is me. Yes, it is. moved down that's two volts and I can hardly hear it now I'm down at about 1.8 volt 
and I can hear it locally. But it's not really discernible in VK5. So we'll now go back up. This is back to 8 volts. I think there's been a bit of fading. So that's the test with VK5 ARG, a distance of about 700 kilometers, and just running a crystal oscillator module on 3.6864. And that's exactly what it's reading on the web SDR with it set to the CW position. Now I'll try other web SDRs around Australia and see if I can hear myself on those as well. It's actually more than I thought. With 8 volts, it is 200 milliwatts. This is on a 2 watt maximum scale. Dropping down to 5 volts, it is much less at around 50 milliwatts. Down at 4 volts it would be around 20 or 30 milliwatts and even less at 3 volts maybe it's only 10 or 15. It only moves a little when I'm at 2 volts. This is VK3KHZ which is about 30 kilometers from here. and you can just see this trace, which is me. Now I've turned it off. Now I've turned it back on. So that's a success with VK3KHZ. This one is VK2 ARI, southwest of Sydney. Only using a station master antenna, which is a vertical. I'd be cheating if I said I could hear anything. Also quite a high noise level. This one is VK5 PH. Also in Outback South Australia. The CW filter is so narrow that it's ringing. So we'll just go to something a bit wider. And there I am. It's another very good reception, as good, maybe slightly better than VK5 ARG. This one is VK3JTM in Ararat, which is maybe 200 kilometers northwest of here. And you can clearly see 
the trace, which is my signal. This one is VK2AAK in northern New South Wales. I've got it on the CW setting. And not as good as with the VK5s, it is a further distance, probably about a thousand kilometres, but there is still reception there. I've just looked up VK2AAK on QRZ and the distance between us is 940 kilometres. There's where I am in Melbourne and the signal was picked up going overland north of Sydney. And here's some more from VK5 ARG. This is down at 4 volts. This is down at 3 volts. And that was still quite solidly audible. This is down at 2 volts and less so down here. back up to 8 volts so this has been a real success using small crystal oscillator modules and getting hundreds of kilometers distant have a look in old computer or electronic equipment you may find some on other useful frequencies for instance, 14.318 in the top end of the 20 meter band is quite common, as are ones in the 28 megahertz band. If you make up a little transmitter, you can use a solderless breadboard if you want. Just make a low pass filter as well, as the outputs of these will have quite a few harmonics. And whatever you do, don't put any more than 8 volts on it because you may well destroy it. Live the QRP life with Minimum QRP. It covers equipment, antennas and operating to make you successful with low power amateur radio. For more information, visit my website vk3ye.com or search the title on Amazon.